this bottle of beer costs twenty dollars. This fitness membership costs five hundred dollars per month. This Tesla can cost you five hundred thousand. And this condo can even cost you two million dollars. Isn't this ridiculous? Where can you find this ridiculous price in the world? Right, only here. Welcome to Singapore. Yes, Singapore is ranked the most expensive city in the world in the past five years, and this is all true. If you live an expert lifestyle in Singapore or like a crazy rich Asian, they are expensive. But if you live like a local, you'll find you just need very minimal expenses to live a good quality of life. Hi guys, welcome la. I gotta speak a little bit Singlish in this video. I consider myself half Singaporean, although I'm a U.S. citizen. But I've lived in Singapore in a very local neighborhood in the past few years. Many people tell you Singapore is expensive, but I want to show you how cheap it can be compared to all the other developed cities that I've lived in before, like Sydney, San Francisco, New York City, Seattle, Shanghai, and so on. I love Singapore, and I'm passionate talking about Singapore. If you haven't, please do click like and the subscribe button below. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, lah. Now, let me show you how much money I need in order to live a good quality of life in such an amazing city and country. First, let's talk about the biggest item, housing. The exchange rate right now is one U.S. dollar to one point three seven Singapore dollar. Just tick the developed country for the sake of apple to apple comparison. For San Francisco, New York City, one bedroom apartment, you need to pay two thousand three hundred to three thousand five hundred U.S. dollar per month. For Seattle, you need to pay two thousand to two thousand five hundred U.S. dollar per month. For Singapore, you can get pretty decent private condo for two thousand to two thousand five hundred Singapore dollar per month. That's equivalent to one thousand five hundred. To one thousand eight hundred U.S. dollar, if you are willing to stay in the public housing (HDB), even cheaper. Either way, it's much cheaper than the medium to big cities in the U.S. Once the housing is taken care of, the rest of the expenses are very minimal. Food. Let's just talk about eating out. The cost of a local Singaporean milk tea is about one point one Singapore dollar. Like de, de si, de o, and two dollar for the bubble tea. Of course, fancier version can be more expensive, like four Singapore dollar. But I used to get it in a shop called It, and it's about two to two point two Singapore dollar a cup. In San Francisco Bay Area, I pay five to six U.S. dollar every day, everywhere for a cup of bubble tea. Back to Singapore, three Singapore dollar on an economy rice. Which is basically that you pick a couple of itemized dishes and rice, and they calculate the price based on the dishes. And four Singapore dollar for chicken rice, five Singapore dollar for noodle soup. If you get fancier, then six Singapore dollar for a fish head noodle soup. If you want to go even fancier, eating in a decent restaurant in a shopping mall. You can easily get a good meal with twelve to thirteen Singapore dollar, and that's all inclusive of service charges and everything. For me, I spend about six hundred to eight hundred Singapore dollar a month on food. That's about five hundred U.S. dollars. In the U.S., you need to pay eight to nine percent taxes on food, depends on which city you live in. On top of that, you need to pay fifteen to twenty percent tips to the waiters. Or the wages. For example, I've paid twelve U.S. dollar for a popia in the Silicon Valley. Popia is a local Singaporean dish, and it's just a snack, not even a meal. So my cost for popia is about fifteen dollar in San Francisco. And guess how much I pay in Singapore? It's about one point five Singapore dollar, and that's one point two U.S. dollar. Wow, that's like a saving of 
ten times. Really? Really. Number three, public transportation. I used to commute on MRT, and that's the subway train in Singapore. About one point one Singapore dollar one way depends on your distance, so it's about forty Singapore dollar a month for work days. In San Francisco, I spend about twenty-five dollar per day commuting from a town about thirty minutes from San Francisco to the city. By living in Singapore, it helped me save four hundred fifty dollar on the commute per month. Wait, wait, I'm not done yet. Even if you want to indulge yourself a little bit and take the taxi, and it's still pretty cheap. From my home in Potong Pasir. One of the neighborhood that is pretty central to Changi Airport, it cost me about fifteen Singapore dollar by Uber and twenty by taxi. I usually spend one hundred twenty to one hundred fifty Singapore dollar on taxi, and that's just under a hundred US dollar. If it's in the US, like San Francisco and New York, you easily pay fifteen dollar just for five blocks of distance. Finish. Due to its great weather in Singapore. Many people just run outdoor and don't even need to pay for gym membership. But if you want to do indoor gym and wait, all the condos got a small fitness room. They always have a treadmill, elliptical, a simple weight lifting machine. So I personally never pay for gym. It's free, yeah. But if you need more than that, there's always a community center in all the districts in Singapore where you can get access to a public gym at a very low cost. Now you may ask, how about the other not day-to-day -day expenses? Healthcare. You pay twenty Singapore dollar to see a doctor in any clinic easily. In the U.S., depending on your medical insurance, if you don't have a medical insurance. You would need to pay one hundred to two hundred U.S. dollar just to see a general family doctors. Yes, unfortunately, unhealthy can make you broke in the U.S. Health insurance. Every year, Singapore government deduct about three hundred dollar from your CPF account to pay for your medical insurance. Depends on your age. CPF is a retirement account, kind of like four hundred one k in the U.S., but not exactly the same. Anyway, it is for the Singapore citizens and the permanent residents, which cover public hospitals. And public hospital is usually quite hard to make appointments with. If you want to get private hospital coverage, you just need to add a few hundred dollars more per year for a better coverage. In the U.S., you may need to pay ten thousand to twenty thousand for a crappy coverage if you don't have an employer. And even if you have an employer subsidy, you may still need to pay two thousand for a social coverage. Tax. Singapore is totally tax haven. Businesses like to set up Asia headquarters in Singapore, and most of the individual there pays around eight percent to fifteen percent kind of tax bracket. Although I still pay my U.S. taxes to Uncle Sam. But with some portion of foreign income as tax free, I ended up saving money in Singapore. If you calculate all the daily expenses that I just mentioned, except for housing, I need about seven hundred for food, forty for MRT, a hundred thirty for taxi, and that's a total of eight hundred seventy in Singapore dollar or six hundred forty in USD. To live a good quality of life in this amazing city, Singapore, where you can get access to everything. If you want to include my housing in Singapore, that's about 1.5k US dollar per month. So that's a total of just a little 2,000 US dollar per month, where I can live a pretty comfortable life in Singapore. You probably need triple the amount to live the same quality of life in San Francisco or New York City. So, is Singapore really the most expensive city in the world? Living an expat lifestyle can be pretty expensive, but if you don't mind living like a local, it's probably one of the cheapest city to live in, while still maintaining such a good quality of life and access to nature and the convenience in a metropolitan city. If I live in the U.S., I don't think I can retire right now. But if I live in Singapore, then it's possible. 
And that's the reason why I've lived in Singapore for the past few years. And it's the most livable city and country that gives me my dream lifestyle. And I love it. If you like this video, try watching other videos in my channel. They are all meaningful. My channel is about sharing my learnings and experience from my travel, international, school, career, and life. Oh, today I have a special guest for the video. The mermaid. You know how in Singapore they have the merlion, which is a combination of um, the lion and the mermaid. I don't have the merlion here today, but I do have the mermaid with me. She will be a special guest for the Singapore video. She say hi. And by the way guys, today I bought a new mic for filming this new video. How does it sound? Is the quality better than last time? It's pretty huge, huh? Look. Don't forget to click the like and the subscribe button below. Okay lah. See you at the comment section. Bye bye until next week. Uh, in Singapore, you know how they have the Merlin as their iconic um, as their iconic animal. But if you need more than that, there's always a community center in all the districts in Singapore where you can get access to... Where... If you calc... If you calculate... If you calculate... <clears throat> if... If you calculate... If you calculate all the daily expenses that I just mentioned, except for housing, 134 taxi, so that's the total of 870 Singapore dollar. And one more thing, I've been doing stock trading using Weibo and Robinhood, and they are commission free. So if you want to save commission fee while still making money on the stock market, check out my referral link below.